Time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Since uh, the weather has been mentioned several times, I thought I would let you see what it's like right now. We have a flood warning. All the snow is melting, um, coupled with a lot of rain that's, that's making it uh, so that some areas are in severe danger of flooding. Uh, my basement is wet, but I'm okay. I'm dry, so don't worry about me. Um, I did some updates to the whiteboard here, so I thought I'd talk about that. Um, because I, I, I felt like that my changes are, are more useful. Um, I'm replacing the, um, the column that said, that counted the number of equipment and the number of cubes that people had with a column about their dual effectiveness and a column about how quickly they travel. Um, the reason I did that, the other, the other ones were maybe more, new, more quantifiable, um, but the number of cubes wasn't super useful so far in what we've seen in the game. I will submit though that it is useful to know how many cubes someone has um, because it it shows their kind of um, overall effectiveness in combat. Sometimes it's it's breadth of ability and sometimes it's um, depth of ability. Um, but that's that's hard to to reflect in just a number. But general in general the more cubes the better. But then if you go underground too the um, the number of the stat is also important. So, you know, I have limited columns. I think this will give you a better idea of how people are doing. Um, so, f this first new column is dual, and this is straight what number I use to figure it out their their dual capability. It's um, based on the number of their highest stat, right? Which is what I assume they would use in a uh, dual, and then every um, extra die they would normally use for combat. Um, and this is, a, this is not in the regular rules for Heldon and Der Anterbelt. Um, this is a house rule I use because... Um, well, I explained it earlier. I'm not going to explain it again. Um, so each, each added die adds to the number. And then if they have a weapon or something, that adds on. Um, interesting to note with Red Tomato, I am not um, adding the dice... Well, I'm, I'm not adding the dice. He combines two abilities, for those of you who don't know, uh, to get his number. I'm not adding the dice from one of those abilities, because that could give him the potential to be um, much stronger than anyone else, because he would get to add the dice from two abilities, whereas everyone else, when they do, will just get to add one. So he just adds the flat number from one ability to the other ability, and then he can add dice from one of the two abilities. Um, so that's this column. And if we look here, Scoot's... And Weeder are our strongest duelists right now. Um, Weeder, big caveat, she won't be the strongest when she goes over ground, uh, above ground, if she makes it. Um, which I think she will. It doesn't look like the underworld is collapsing anymore. Um, because the she has two weapons, neither of which I think can go to the overworld. Um, in fact, one of them she might have to drop because she doesn't have shadow cubes anymore. I'll have to check on that. Um, and those both add plus two. So she will be at eight if she goes to the overworld unless she gets stronger in the interim. Um, so Scoots is probably our strongest duelist. Um, in the underworld, Weeder is tied. Uh, basically when they duel, whoever's attacking gets a modifier based on the other person, the difference between their, um, their scores. So Scoots attacking Weeder would have a modifier of zero, so she'd just have to roll under ten. Um, Scoots attacking one red tomato would have a modifier of plus one, so she'd have to get eleven or less. Um, so red tomato and fries are our second strongest duelists, and then Tyson Mooney. And Tyson, that's that's this is what I think is holding Tyson up. She has the mobility, and she has what she needs to take on the nameless right now. But she's unable to find much purchase with her strength. Um, and dueling strength doesn't translate directly into how well one will do against the nameless or the dragon or Der Verdamta because, um, well, I'm not sure about Der Verdamta, but the other, the two above ground ones, they have different, um, different things they're vulnerable against. So you don't know what stat they're vulnerable against. Scoots, however, does know what stat the Nameless is vulnerable against because she talked to the mice. Um, so there's kind of our spread. Our two um, champions are our worst duelists right now. So... There's that. Uh, travel. Now this is not, uh, this, the lower the number the better. So 
since there's different sorts of travel capabilities, I did a ranking system. Scoots, I gave number one because she has that broom. I thought about having her be tied with the people who have a five movement because that's almost enough to go to another field, but I think her broom is even better than that. Um, Red Tomato, he has a movement of six normally, but he's unable to enter red fields with that cart. And if he wants to enter a red field, he has to set the cart down. So that, that put him down one. Um, so he's tied with Tice and Mooney for number two. As you can see, you know, Red Tomato, he was, he was, I would say, probably in last place along with Mooney for most of the thing. But by these numbers, he's actually doing pretty well. Um, so there's that. Fries is in fourth place along with Weeder, and then our third place is Curly with a movement rate of four, which is respectable. Four is a decent movement rate, and Half Pint, uh, she's very slow. But when I was looking at the board today, it just occurred to me how close she could potentially be to victory. I think she's in the same place as Tice, however, um, in that she, she doesn't have her cube. She died uh, recently, so she doesn't have a lot of combat abilities. But if she can get that up, then she, you know, she's just going home, and then she has what she needs to take on the Nameless. If she can manage to squeak out a win against the Nameless, she's got the game. Um, so even though she's going slow, I wouldn't put her out of it yet. That's play. All right, half pint in the little girl, and I'm I'm tempted to get a little girl action figure to show that um, where she is since I've talked about her so much. I think I'll do that um, after this this take. Uh, they're gonna go consult the mice. Um, since Half Pint has this little magical wand, she has to get a 4 or better rather than a 3 or better. That's doable with 3 dice, we'll see. And nope, the mice refuse to talk to her. I don't think she's going to wait around for them though. Um, she's going to continue onwards. Fry's just went to um, the court clerk, I guess is probably who gives these out, and got a, a quest. An uh, anti-nameless recipe quest that he's very happy with. The Axe of the Gnomes. So he first has to get a silver hammer and then has to bring it to the gnomes and they'll give him a, a magnificent axe. He will love that. Red Tomato just defeated this basilisk. That brings his blue cube total to the 4x range. That's going to bring him to uh, actually a... a a, a 10 as his dual number so he's he's a contender for scoots and weeder right now um, thanks to his gnomish ability to combine his numbers um, he also drew a, a token from the bag and this is the dwarven ghost here so fry's quest uh, goes right here and the dwarven ghost is the next step for his um, his anti-dragon quest so he's got a nice little simple route that won't take him too long um, to advance on both of those he might be getting back into this game. Tice is trying to strengthen herself by uh, facing the Servant of the Nameless. Unfortunately, she failed. Oh. Fry's finally beat this golem. That brought him up to the 5x range, so he's also uh, a 10 duelist. And on her second try, Tice was successful. This is going to help her chances quite a bit, I think. Well, not quite a bit, but a good bit um, to be successful against the Nameless. He probably would have liked to place it somewhere in your scoots, but she's difficult to head off because of her broomstick. So he placed this, um, and by he I mean Mooney's Aqualad, he placed this counter here by half pint. She's going to trust her ability to evade to get her out of whatever it is. It's that spider again. Um, yeah, she would definitely like to evade it if possible. Unfortunately, she was not successful, so she is going to fight with her melee. She's charging the spider. Um, I know I said I was going to get a little girl action figure. I forgot. Uh, here we go. Ooh, four. She beat the spider. Unfortunate time for the stubborn broomstick to act up. Uh, Scoots was all set to start flying eastward towards the dragon. Um, however, the stubborn broomstick wants to go back to Red Tomato's house, so she has to be here. That's going to cost her uh, three turns if she keep if she's traveling by broomstick. Four turns? No, no, three. One, two, three. Four. Yeah, four turns. Um, which, you know, it's getting closer now. Fry's is getting closer. Tice is getting stronger. She could she could make a run for the nameless. Then we have Weeder and Duranterfelt. So you know, time is getting to be a little bit more precious. Scoots is losing her luxury. 
here's where the cart's uh, inability to move on red fields is really going to mess with Red Tomato's plans. He teleported up here, um, used the Herbalist, which was nice. He doesn't want to ditch his cart right now, though, because here comes Half Pint and the little girl. Uh, I had a better little girl, but I'm using her for Betrayal at the House on the Hill. Um, she's with one of the characters there, so this little girl who, who Scoot's abandoned... Um, as a baby. I, I guess that kind of works better, I guess. It makes it, her appear even more heartless for abandoning a baby. Um, so, Red Tomato can't... doesn't feel like he can go to the befuddled healer. He was going to go there and um, give him the chestnut cookies in order to get a, a magical bag that is almost always almost always has gold in it. Every time you take a gold piece out of the bag, another one might appear. So, um, but he can't do that. So he's going to go take whatever this counter is. Half Pint put it in her path. He figures it's probably something fun. It's a troll. Unfortunately, he can't add his mighty magical abilities to, to fight the troll. He has to just combine his range and melee. So he's got to get under a six twice, if I calculate correctly, on three dice. And he's already failed, so he's going to lose a chunk of skin. And I'm sorry, Red Tomato. Undaunted by Red Tomato's presence, and perhaps comforted by the fact that she has company, uh, Half Pine's going to dive in at the troll here and see if she can beat it. And she's, oh, that's rough for her. She loses... That troll is winning out. He is getting lots of tasty morsels from little people. Interesting little convergence is happening here. Curly just moved. He he came here. We have Scoots at Red Tomato's house. And Fries is uh, searching through the swamp for the Lizard Man camp right now. Um, they're all very close together. And something could happen, I think, when these three very aggressive people get together. Scoots is using the secret passageway she planted in Red Tomato's house to descend into the underworld and um, oh, one, two, one, two, three. Yep, she's going to jump Weeder um, right, right on Orion. They're sitting on Orion. She's going to attack her. It's a 10 to 10 battle, so she gets a 10, she wins. And she does. She is going to um, take a life well, no, what's she going to take? She could either take a weapon. The problem with taking a weapon is Weeder has another weapon, right? And they're they're pretty much the same. Uh, she could take a life, but then Weeder has this nectar that she could bring the life back. So maybe she should take the nectar. Yep, I think she's going to take her nectar. Oh, but she's full of items. Hmm... She opted instead to um, drop her lightning spell and take the nectar. She thought that would be more effective. Um, why she dropped the lightning spell? If she dropped the broom, I don't know, the broom seems more useful to her right now than the lightning spell. Lightning spell is more useful than the, the feathery boots, but um, if she dropped the feathery boots, Weeder could grab them and then maybe run away from her. and she, The Lyre of Orpheus is, is the ticket to the dragon. So she got the lightning spell because if Weeder picks it up it's not going to really help her anyway. Red Tomato considered taking a shot at Half Pint but she talked him out of it. Um, so instead he is going to head over here and face this Yeti. Um, thinks that's a good use of time and you know I think he's probably right. He's going to roll three dice. And what is he up to get? He has to get eight or better. Oh no, four dice. Wow. Eight or better. And he easily got that. So he's going to actually drop the cookies um, because the Yeti has a sword and he would like the sword more than the cookies right now because that means, you know, he keeps having to use his uh, melee ability. Now since he has the sword, that's not going to be totally pathetic if he does have to use it in the future. Tice is still in training mode. She knows the the um, identity of this guard up here is the one that she has a good chance of beating. Um, so on three dice she has to get seven or better. If she wins she gets two cubes of her choice. And she does. 
Scoots has put Weeder in a tough position. So, it's her turn right now, Weeder's turn. If she tries to run away from Scoots, um, Scoots can catch her. If she tries to attack, she can probably, you know, get a good shot at Scoots. The problem is, uh, Scoots can just heal it again. So, if she could attack, what could she take that would make it so that she could win out? And she doesn't want to run. She wants to hold her own. So she's going to take a shot. She rolled a 10. That's what she needed. And she is going to take the nectar. Um, I think she can go ahead and use it right now. So that's what she's going to do. And she brings herself up to 4. And forgot to add this lightning that she picked up before the duel. Half pint against the troll again. She got it the first time. She's got one more shot. The troll takes two hits. And she beat the troll. That's going to help her out. Unfortunately for half pint, after removing the troll, the phoenix is what she pulled from the bag. For those of you who don't recall, that's gonna that's the third of the anti dragon quests right there. And Red Tomato is right nearby to pluck it up. Not a bad one for him to get either. Um, ranged is one of his two uh, semi decent stat uh, areas. Curly decided to interject himself into uh, the events of the Antervelt. He is going to. Um, attack Scoots. And he needs to get, let's see, he has a 7. He's got to get a 5 or better, so it's kind of a long shot, but he figures it's worth it. If he can take her down, that's going to give him some breathing room to try and um, do something other than be on the defensive so much. There's still his Tice up there, but he doubts her abilities. And he failed, unfortunately. So she's going to use that. She's going to just take that stone from him. Fry's finally found the um, lizard people camp and I don't think he should have any problem beating them but I have to roll. Uh, anyway, I guess it's possible. It's really unlikely though. I'll let you statistics folk um, figure that out but um, five dice he has to get under seven with any combination of two dice. Hard. And he managed it. So that is going to give him a coin, another cube, and the silver hammer. If he can bring that to the gnomes, which actually live right next door to him. They're his neighbors. Um, they're not there yet. But if he can bring it to them, then he will be able to get the axe of the gnomes. He's going for two axes. And Scoots got out of that uh, little rumble pot there, and she's taking on one of uh, Titios, I guess. And she beat Titios. She is not going to take the treasure. She's going to take the coin, um, and she is going to also increase her magical experience all the way. So she's now in 11. Uh, 11 is her dual number. Red Tomato's taking on the Phoenix. Unfortunately, he's unable to augment uh, his ranged ability with his magic for this fight. So he is going to have to roll a four or less on three dice. And fortunately, the Phoenix got the better of him there. And Weeder chases after Scoots. She's going to get a minus one to her, her roll this time. So she's got to get a nine or better. Uh, which she gets a 9 exactly. She is going to... Hmm, does she steal something? Or does she take the life? I think... I think uh, I think Weeder's the type to take the life, actually. While everything else was going on, Mirabar was placed here. She is one of the trainers. Now, um... I think it might cost a coin to train with Mirabar. But basically what, um... Mooney's Aqualad gets to do is he gets to roll, and if he gets higher than that four there, his magic ability will go up. So that's quite nice, because he has all this money to burn, too. So he's going to pay a coin, train with Mirabar, and he rolled a three. That's a bummer for him. So he proved too good to advance. You learn, learn more by losing. Half Pint's in a rather delicate position. So she convinced Red Tomato not to attack her, correct? 
but now here he is with the Phoenix here. If he gets that, that's going to be another person out after her um, precious master, the dragon. I don't know what she's going to do. It's complicated further by the fact that Red Tomato can trounce her pretty easily, but the attacker always gets an advantage, so she would have a, a 7. She'd have to get a 5 or better on two dice. That's not very likely. I think I think she is going to make a tactical retreat right here and let it go. I don't know what she would do if she had the upper hand, if she would um, turn around and stab him in the back. In a way, I mean, he is going after the quest. Um, she may stick close. She may stick close. She's picking up the chestnut cookies. Curly's not going to chase the women to sticks. He is instead going to try and face Orion. He needs to get a four or better, and then he gets one of the special items. In this case, the Bow of Hercules, or the Boggin des Hercules. Um, oh, close, but not close enough. Fries and Tice are both drawn to Red Tomato's house. Um, primarily, well, Fries is going northward anyway, but he's going to take a stop here because there is this nice little treasure trove of um, quests. And let's see. And Scoots is using her turn to rest up in the river sticks. So she's not dueling at all, she's just getting her health back. You'll be happy to know Red Tomato played it smart. Rather than try another shot at the Phoenix with Half Pint so close, he went up to the herbalist and she fixed him up. So he is all fit as a Red Tomato fiddle and ready to try another shot at the Phoenix. And you know what, I don't, I, I wanna just, I made a ruling just now. Um, Half Pint can't do this quest. She can't fight the Phoenix. And also the Phoenix refuses to allow her to, t to, to, to do the test. I think th these, these creatures are sort of, um, kind of like spirits. Like, do this test and then you will, you will be able to go on the quest to rid our kingdom of the dragon. That thing. That's what's going on. Fries is taking a shot at Fries. Fries has a 7, 8, 9, 10. She has a 8, 9. So she's going to get a minus 1. She's got to get an 8 or better. Looks like she's successful. She is going to take his sword away from him. Leader's turn. She's taking another crack at Scoots. Her number is eight nine. Oh, oh she had eleven. No, she had eight ten. Sorry, uh, minus one's nine. And she got a ten. That's a failure. That's not what she wanted right now. Um, so what is Scoots going to take? I think Scoots is going to take this special weapon right there. Mooney's got money to spend so he's going another go with um, Mirabar. And we got a three and a five. That's higher than four. So his magic skill is permanently increased to five. And then he's going to use this quest he has. Um, find Mirabar. She instructs you in magic combat. Rolls. I guess it looks like two dice. And roll the snake eyes. That's very good because that's going to add plus two to it on top of it. So his magic just jumped up three points. It was good that he was patient and did the, the test before uh, turning in his quest because um, if he had got that plus two ahead of time, his, uh, his money would have been harder to uh, increase his skill. And that's where we're going to have to leave it. We have some interesting situations going on. Tice and Fries are starting to mix it up. That's um, a new sort of thing. Tice has, has kind of been on her own through most of it, but she just decided to pick on Fries. We'll see what happens with that. Um, she took his sword, which which is not a good idea. Or maybe a good idea. She could She could... She's really kind of desperate for some sort of strength. She feels like um, she's not quite ready to take on the nameless. Um, 
the really she rode down there to get the quest, but Fry's got the one she wanted, and so she's maybe just a little frustrated. Um, I'm really uh, Mooney got a huge boon there. That seven is going to put him in a place that very few others are at, and that is a flexible place. He's able to take on. Um, a number of different monsters with competency having both of these numbers and that's going to give him a better chance should he ever get the chance to face the nameless or the dragon of having a skill that's actually useful the only other person who's kind of in that place is red tomato and that's because he can combine um so that that put that i don't know i think that that last turn really upped mooney's chances the situation in the underworld has gotten interesting again um I don't know what's going to happen between these two women. And Curly, is, you know, even though he is uh, damaged, he's weak enough that the others are probably going to leave him alone, but he's strong enough that he could sway um, the, the battle uh, should he choose. Um, we'll see what happens down there. And then we also have our two little ones. I guess Fry's is also short, but these, these two seem slighter. Uh, Fries is more stocky. Um, over here, with the, uh, the the phoenix and yeah, pretty interesting. Forgive my tongue today. I, I'm very tired, so it's more difficult for me to speak. Next time.